I don't think you need this. No, we should be okay if we... Do we have Google oh. Translate? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm not going to say this. Huh? Bit of a bit of Google Translate. <laughs> <laughs> That's a low blow. I'm windy. You're windy. Yeah. I thought by how many days I've been here, you would have known I have a really sensitive heart. <laughs> <laughs> and you just wouldn't do that. No, no, no. <laughs> Uh, well, I will do my best. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly, to, slow. to speak in my best English, <laughs> because Scots is my native tongue. So, I'm sure. uh, yeah, sure. we'll do we'll do our best to try and communicate. Um, this is always a tough time. We've eaten, we've driven a long time, and this is the first one after that. So, thank you, whoever decided that this would be. Uh, I think you should self select it. Uh, <laughs> so. The revelation begins, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show to his servants the things that must soon take place. That's 1-1. One, one. And in verse 4, John is instructed to write these things down, that they might be distributed among <coughs> seven churches. Uh, I was going to get you to give me the seven churches, but our time and all the rest is, is limited. So we'll, we'll just say the seven churches, but this is the third of the seven. So we're not doing things in the order that that would have been uh, delivered, you know, the, the mail run that would have been there. Uh, we're here in Pergamon. Uh, but the entire book is addressed really to all of these folks, although here we've got this being focused in, uh, in each one of these letters, to some personal things that pertain to them. And, and that says a number of things. That says, firstly, that Christ is concerned about what's happening in their particular location. So wherever we are, you know, Christ is concerned about that. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we'll notice that keeps repeating is, I know. Mm -hmm. I know. So he knows what's going on. He knows the things that are positive and he knows the things that are negative. He knows the things that are good and the things that are bad. And he wants to address those things. And he'll do that mm -hmm. as he speaks to each of these uh, congregations there in those places. So here's what I want you to do, okay? I was hoping that we were a bit more sophisticated than just having these. I thought you would distribute, you know, these goggles that you get, <laughs> you know, the, what, what do they call them again? Yeah. <laughs> virtual reality. Virtual reality. That's it. That we would all have those and we could look around here and it would just be And all of the various temples and buildings would all just shoot up and we'd know and we'd see, like it says there in the little uh, information thing there. You know, the sanctuary of uh, Demeter or uh, the, uh, the uh, um, temple of Dionysus or uh, Athena or Hera, the, the queen of the gods, or himself, Zeus, the king of the gods. And we'd see all of that laid out before us uh, there. So I'm asking you, kind of use your imagination a little bit just to think about that. This is virtual reality in your mind as you picture, you know, that scene that's around us. But on top of all of that, all of that pagan worship that's going on, there is another thing that's happening. And that is that this is right at the heart of the imperial cult. We have Caesar worship here. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was 29 BC that Augustus Caesar had a, a temple built here in honor of his name, where people would say he is God and Lord. And so that's happening right here. So, no wonder Jesus will come along in this revelation and say, this is where Satan dwells. This is where his throne is. Because what we've got here is a situation where Satan is utilising all of these things here to get in the minds and the hearts of people so that they will be drawn to him, that they will be influenced by him. Now, just think about it. Think about the cities and the towns that you work and live in. Okay? Is there some of that going on today? You know, wherever we are, that Satan will utilize all kinds of things. It may not be a temple to whoever, but, but these things will be utilized so that the hearts and the minds of people in the world will be captured. So that's the scene set there. Okay? So you can take off the goggles and 
we started with virtual reality. Jesus was given the reality. The reality is, yeah, here Satan has his throne. Here Satan dwells. And so with that kind of backdrop, what I think we want to do is have the reading from Revelation 2. I'm going to begin in verse 12 through to 17. And Barbara will help me out the reading that for us. And to the angel of the church in Pergamum write, the words of him who has the two sharp two-edged sword. I know where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, yet you hold fast my name, and you did not deny my faith. Even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was killed among you, where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you. You have some there who hold the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel, so that they might eat food sacrificed to idols and practice sexual immorality. So also you have some who hold the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Therefore, repent. If not, I will come to you soon and war against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who conquers, I will give some of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone with a new name written on the stone that no one knows except the one who receives it. So there's a few things in this, and you know, as I was sitting in the bus, I was thinking, I can get three points out of this. Yay! Okay, and see if we can come up with a poem, then we've got a sermon, but we don't have time for that sort of thing, so we're going to condense this. I will make mention that there is a commendation to these people. I mean, imagine it, living in this kind of place, living in a place where there is this imperial cult, where the proconsul, and, and this would have been the... Uh, the governmental seat, this is where the power lay there as far as government was concerned at that time. He's also the high priest of the imperial cult. So here he is in this place, there's all of that kind of thing going on there for, for, for them as they live uh, in such a place. Really difficult place to be uh, living in uh, there. But these people will hold fast to Christ's name and they will hold fast. ESV says, oh, you picked up, to my faith. Okay, that's Christ's faith. That's the faith. That's the word of faith. And I think that's more like what should be in here. Scholars will debate it. But the reason I think that is because the next bit is talking about where the, uh, there is a, a, a slap on the wrist kind of thing, saying, look, you're tolerating some things that's going on here. And these are doctrines that are not true to me into my word. And so those two things are going on there. But here's the bit that I want us just to take away with us because uh, the rain's about to, to fall down. Here we are in this place where it is a political centre for this region, okay? And we have this proconsul who has the right of the sword. There's a, a Latin uh, name, and I don't know if I can pronounce it properly, but something like uh, Ue uh, Gladii which means the right of the sword. That means he has the right to pronounce any kind of judgment. He has justice in his hand with a two-edged sword. He can do that. And that's the right to say, you live or you die. That's what he's got. Did you notice how this whole thing began? If I can turn this around and get back to the, the text for us here. What Jesus said, how he introduced himself. The words of him who has the sharp two-edged sword, okay? Start with virtual reality. We start with reality, and the reality is, yeah, you guys, you have the power, the physical power here in this place, but here is the ultimate reality. The ultimate reality is found in Christ. Christ is the ultimate reality, and he is the ultimate power overall. There is nothing, nothing that this world can throw at us that he can't conquer because he has that power he has the ability he's the one that we look to all the time so it says as it concludes in every single one of these churches gets a similar sort of thing he who conquers mm -hmm. isn't that good? Yeah. Yeah. and then he who has an ear to hear mm -hmm. let him yeah. hear mm -hmm. 
we need to listen up. Yes. <laughs> that we might come. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I thought initially that these Pergamum gods were troubled by us coming here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Reading this, they should be. Amen. 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 Amen.